Hey everyone, uh, we are doing a podcast. Why the hell are we doing a podcast? We're going to call it the Not Pod, like everything else. <laughs> uh, I think so. Uh, no, I think I think you know if this was your idea, Arid, so let's uh, uh, accountability first. But no, I, I think it's it was really interesting because I think every time uh, we we kind of like try to explain, create content or market Notco in a way, we always feel we land very short of what we want to say. No? Um, Notco is a very complex entity. We are doing things maybe behind the scenes that no one knows. Um, uh, you know, we, we're applying technology at the same way that we are creating a CPG business. How do we do that? Um, it's, it's, it's really hard to grasp when you're not in Notco to understand what Notco really is. Yeah. No? A PowerPoint doesn't do it. Oh, no. That's why, that was why it's an idea. Yeah. Because we've been giving the same PowerPoint for like two years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, so what we wanted to do is a little bit explore what really, what, what Notco really is, the technology, how do we handle, you know, internally the talent, uh, how do we manage our time, um, how does leadership at Notco works, um, and, and, and yeah, all the nitty gritty of the AI and the boom of AI and how maybe in 2015 we were foreseeing that this boom would would come one day and finally we are you know ahead of the curve everybody knows you know what, what or at least the same language they talk the, they talk the same language that we are uh, how we are trying at least to capitalize technology in a way that maybe uh, wasn't evident before or it didn't work before no so the market timing the market fit of our products how we are going all the way from a CPG world to a SaaS company I think we're going to navigate a lot of problems uh, and friction internal external and um, so uh, yeah I think this podcast is going to be interesting we don't know uh, where it's headed to so you know there's a lot of risk as well we are not hosts we are not podcasters at all yeah right uh we're in really way too deep right now <laughs> but we are too deep uh to, to raise our hand and, and, yeah. and jump but anyway um so maybe we can start with a background not everyone knows who we are so um matias i am the ceo and the founder of notco um uh, my background Definitely wasn't food or, or AI or anything like that. Born and raised in a banking family, uh, you know, internship in JP Morgan uh, and banks. So I think I was portrayed as a finance bro, uh, and uh, it wasn't my game. Uh, I really understood I, I didn't want to go there. Um, so I ended up with my passion, which was food and the food system and everything I ate. I kind of like weirdly didn't understand there was so much confusion in the market and I decided to come to something that I was passionate about not having any idea how I was going to resolve it or even if I was going to find a problem to resolve actually but it was something that was I was really passionate about and, and I knew there was a lot of problems no so being that said uh, that's my background and we will explain more how I got here but also uh, you know Happy for you to present yourself as a welcome sure. to the team. Yeah, uh, Adit Patel. Uh, I am the SVP of AI and, and product inside Notco. I, I met you like five and a half years ago. Um, and my background was I, I was in tech in Silicon Valley working on ad tech systems, fintech systems. Prior to that, I was working on aerospace engineering. So I was writing code for satellites in orbit, which is a very different career <laughs> shift <laughs> working in, in food and AI. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been an interesting journey over the last five years about kind of how, you know, we met, we met with Kareem, all the ideas that we had four or five years ago and kind of how they manifested yeah. through time for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my, 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 <clears throat> my, I would say my mind was always about kind of like, how do you resolve or how do you revolutionize systems? No, like, um, Revolutionizing systems throughout products is, is really hard to get. I think when you think about companies like Apple or Tesla, they're you know, fundamentally technology companies. They're not product companies. They end up capitalizing their technology throughout products. You know? And it's insane how you kind of like jump on board a Tesla and you feel different than an electric car from BMW or you know, 
whoever, Ford or Volvo or whatever, no? Same as, as iPhone, no? Utilizing an iPhone, uh, you have an iPhone, no? No, I have an iPhone, <laughs> okay. yeah. <laughs> when, you, when, you don't have an, when you don't have an iPhone, you're telling the world something, no? For me, it's like when you, when you don't have an iPhone, you kind of like want to stay away from certain things. But anyway, mm -hmm. I, I just want to say that, that building technology companies sometimes require business models that are not fundamentally technology-based, no? They're not SaaS, they're not, you know, uh, even B2B, you know? So how did not go become that, no? How, how I think, you know, what, what's interesting about Notco is how we explored the world of business models throughout a base technology, you know? So um, at least in my mind, the, the idea to revolutionize an industry, and specifically the food industry or the consumer goods industry, was to fundamentally introduce a new technology. Now, how we would actually create a billion dollar company, I had no freaking idea. No. And let me ask you a question though, but so you have no background in AI, but you're saying I love food and we're gonna put AI at the core of it. Like how do you even come up with this without sort of the technical background on, on being like a computer science guy or AI guy? Like what compelled you to, to that very start? Uh, this is gonna sound crazy, but actually what I did in my first internship in a bank was um, work in the um, business intelligence department. And this was in 2012. Um, so business intelligence wasn't even a thing, no? And it's very statistical, it's not really AI, no? But they sold it as AI. And so I kind of like started my banking career understanding the nuances of what AI could do. And it was like, wow, like this is actually something new, something incredible, potentially, you know, uh, ground changing for absolutely every industry. So I, I, I kind of like felt in love with the concept of AI, not knowing a lot of it, but the concept of AI really resounded with me and said, shit, like literally in the next couple of years, everything is going to be touched by AI. This was again, 2012. No open AI, no chat GPT, no, nothing, no. So I guess with that kind of like curiosity, I came into what my passion was, which was food, no. And this food system and the food industry, it was really strange because I became a guy, so I was a, crazily enough, I was a rugby player. And so I had to, you know, I don't have the physical characteristics, you know, yeah. of a rugby player. You're showing me pictures of you from like when you were 15 yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> Scrawny exactly. dude. <laughs> I, I was definitely not built for a rugby player. But the thing is that I needed to be at my top performance in order to really play in first division. You know? So food was something incredibly fundamental for me. And whenever I kind of like researched enough, I was always more confused before I started to research. Like one day, you know, eggs are good for you. The next day, eggs are bad for you. One day, milk is good. The next day, milk is bad. And there's no fundamental science that is explaining really if it's good or if it's bad. Generally speaking, nothing is really good or nothing is really bad. You know, it, 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 it's a choice and you make, you know, that choice very consciously on consequences you might have, secondary effects, you know, so on. But there was a lot of confusion. And you saw in the supermarket things that, one day, you know, the public enemy was calories and then saturated fats and then sodium and then gluten and then GMOs and then... So as a consumer, I was like, man, this industry needs to be super broken in order for them to be utilizing all of this marketing to kind of like drive the consumer in a way that they're not even sure that this is the enemy or not, mm -hmm. no? So it... it Every industry that generated confusion in that way, for me, that industry is broken. What was broken about the industry? I had no idea. That's why I got into food. It was like, I'm going to help the industry understand what is good and what is bad. But I think the way you're framing it is perfect, because I think right now where we are with this sort of revolution of AI, um, there's so much hype cycle, right? And, and being in AI for like the last decade or, or more, you see these hype cycles go up and down. Um, and I've talked to some founders myself here in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, you know, should I start an AI company? Um, and the number one answer you give back is, what are you trying to solve for? 
you don't just sell, you don't just start an AI enabled company because you you think AI is cool. Yeah. And I like that's what I think is really interesting. Like you, I asked you this question, and all you talked about was like, look at all the problems in the <laughs> yeah. food industry. Yeah. Um, so I think that's like that's the right approach, right? You yeah. need to first understand there's this huge pain point that needs to be solved, yeah. and then you have to work backwards to kind of figure out how do you systematically solve that. And I think that makes a differentiation uh, of kind of thinking about how to put AI yeah. in a position to solve problems. Exactly, and, and, and sometimes it's the media in which you solve it for. The, the, the outcomes or, or how do you capitalize uh, the AI you're trying to introduce is naturally occurring, no? And I think at the very beginning at NotCo, you know, we, we kind of like approach this, this problem in a way that is a multidimensional problem, very multi-layer problem. It's, it's, it's the CPGs, it's the ingredient companies. In the ingredient companies, you have the protein companies, you have the flavor and fragrances. Uh, you know, so it's a multi-layered problem that you're trying to fix. And what AI is really good at is exactly that. It's solving for multi-dimensional problems. No? So for us, it was way more of like, we spent two years when we started Notco at understanding what data to look at, what was describing food, the things that we thought were describing food were not describing food. You know, there are different layers and different dimensions of data that describe different parts of the food system and the relationship between food and the human being. And so it was more of about this new research or how do you implement a new technology in a very old and obsolete system in order to generate innovation, generate new products that would drive the future of food. So choices and decisions at the very beginning were super important. I think you know, people should know that the first approach of Notco was actually to be a B2B company. We always said, let's create technology to introduce to the CPG world in order for them to create better products, better products for humans, better products for the environment, uh, you know, um, innovations that really, you know, kind of like talk to the people that you really want to talk to, because also the innovations, you know, process inside this company is completely broken. And we're going to obviously talk about that and how we tackle with technology that. But my, my, my approach was like, how does the underlying technology would help us, you know, revolutionize this world? And when we started with the B2B approach, we said, there is no fucking way this is going to work. <laughs> The reason why is because we are trying to introduce a way that big companies or the system either is not ready to deploy or they don't even want to deploy it. No? So we started off with this crazy product with a local company and we have a very specific brief and the brief was amazing. Uh, if we ended up launching that product, I think we would have had a great success. But when we got to the end of the innovation process, the product was such a Frankenstein product that, you know, it was definitely not going to work. And that's where we said, shit, it's not an inter at a new technology introduced to the system that, that is going to revolutionize the system. It's we need to show everyone the way for our ways to work better than what they are doing in order for them to then in five years, six years, 10 years, whatever, come back and say, holy shit, you were right. Yeah. This is the way. So... I think, you know, the way this, this, this worked and, and Notco kind of like uh, uh, navigated this through was very interesting. We started off with this brand. We, need, we, we knew we needed to talk to the mainstream market. We knew that we needed to create incredibly indulgent product and at the same time, you know, do a more sustainable, more healthy approach. For us at the very beginning was completely plant-based and this was like the banner that we hold it and plant-based is the future and so on. But then we started to navigate kind of like the, the, the world of the consumer goods industry. And we said, wait, in order to do that, you need to fix many problems. The ingredient industry, the, the, you know, the, the, the way we create experimentation process, uh, you, know, uh, you know very well, and maybe you can explain this way better, you know? but even combining 10 ingredients with three restrictions generate an outcome of possibilities in order to get to the optimal solution that is absolutely insane. And you have these metrics, and obviously I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's like how AI can really help us get to innovation faster, where at the end of the day, the consumer is who, who wins, no? Um, but that, you know, in a very long route, <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's kind of like where we started to understand that there, there's something about AI 
that could solve for a problem that is fundamental for humanity today and in the future. And, and, and I think that's, that, that was the approach. How we were going to do it, no fucking idea. How, what was the business model? No idea. What was the brand? Well, maybe we knew. Yeah, the not was. company was, you know, at the very early stages already created. But, you know, again, I think we, I went overboard. But no, but I, I remember those early days because, yeah, you were always so sort of problem focused. These are the problems. This is what we got to solve for, et cetera. Um, and then you knew there was data. And then you thought, well, AI is a thing that turns the data into solutions. Why don't yeah. we start there? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think that's kind of a great place to, to start. A bunch yeah. of problems. I have a bunch of data. How can I use this data to solve those problems? Exactly. Yeah. And, and well, then, then we can speak a little bit about the profoundity of that data. No? Data is mostly in this industry in pen and paper, insanely enough in mm. pen and paper, or you know, the most <laughs> elaborated companies have it in an, Excel, in, in an Excel spreadsheet, very disconnected from one department to another, from one science team to another. It's crazily how the potential of data was there and it wasn't being used in the correct way. So yeah. maybe even like going and, and stopping right there, like what made you come to NotGo? You know, where was your mind yeah. uh, when you started off? W why did you see a potential in this way of looking at disrupting an industry? Uh, so tell us a little bit, a bit more about <laughs> you and your story and also how you came into NotGo and and, and yeah, yeah, it's a it's a funny story I think because I was working, I was working on 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 fintech stuff, great job, great salary, yeah. <laughs> great perks, yeah. flying business class everywhere, um, and then and then this this ta this tangent into oh you're gonna work on AI for food what is AI for food, is that even a category of AI that's yeah. worth solving, uh, but I remember meeting you I remember meeting uh, Kareem um, and. And it, it was so convincing. Once again, you guys were talking just about pain points. And I remember first time meeting Kareem um, and talking about the first versions of Giuseppe, our AI system. And I was like, how did you make this? He's like, a, 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 like um, on the USDA website, there's all these data files that no one has ever just joined together and yeah. make like a data set where we can like start looking at the, the world of, of animal nutrition versus plant nutrition and try to make products from a data first approach. And I remember him saying, uh, yeah, and we, we made a, we made a plant-based milk with uh, pineapple and cabbage using this. And I was like, sounds crazy. <laughs> Fishy. <laughs> right? Um, and at that time, I was really heavily doing research in generative AI, uh, kind of, you know, just building my own small generative AI network. This is before ChatGPT, before the transformer stuff took off. And I was really curious about saying, hey, this is a really interesting sort of problem statement. You have... Uh, you know, a mission, you're trying to get to more sustainable products by creating different kinds of formulations using sustainable, sustainable ingredients. And you know, the universe of ingredients is just essentially limitless. How do you factor in this huge combinatorics problem to get to a product? Um, and I was really curious about if generative AI could solve that problem. So I really joined the company from a perspective of, I had this really interesting research idea and research goal of bringing generative AI into this industry. And I thought the problem statement lent itself really nicely to the framework of, you know, Gen AI. Um, and now it was it was funny in the early days because we were talking about prompting and, and stuff like that in the early versions of Giuseppe. Mm -hmm. Giuseppe, no one knew what we were talking about. Yeah. They're like, what what is prompting and stuff? And of course, five years later, everyone knows what a prompt is. What prompts are you guys using? Yeah. Um, so it was really it was really from the sort of fundamental. Hey, I think there's a new emerging technology here that could be placed really nicely in this space. Um, and you know, my brain was not just for food, but any CPG product out there, yeah. cosmetics, formulations of flavors and fragrances and stuff like that. Uh, well, so it's been interesting. It, it's, 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 it's very interesting to hear you, you know, talk about that because if, if you need to stop and, and connect the dots kind of like prior to NotGo, you know, uh, there's aerospace engineer, there's Boeing, there's Yahoo, there's this like Popery <laughs> of like <laughs> crazy things that you did in the past and, and, and that led you to to what you're doing right now. How do you go back and connect the dots? Mm. I think my my whole uh, my whole career has just been really curiosity driven and sort of pain point solution driven. I found a problem, curious about could this solution work for that problem and go from there. And kind of the common theme through my career has been. Uh, autonomous decision making. So when I was working in aerospace on robotics, it was about 
how does this control system actually navigate around low Earth orbit? How does it do momentum maneuvers and stuff like that? And then going into fintech and adtech, it's kind of a similar thing where it's a controls problem. How do I optimize long-term revenue for airline tickets? How do I optimize ad pricing across two huge ad exchange networks making billions of dollars you know, mm -hmm. per, per quarter? Um, so it, there were these big problems with sort of uh, really interesting solutions from a technical side, um, but with big outcomes as well. And so the idea was if we can start embedding kind of you know, autonomous decision making through the course of whatever you're trying to optimize for, um, in this case it's food, you can get to better outcomes. And I saw that from my robotics background to the FinTech and AdTech. And I was like, can we apply this to food? And I didn't realize how hard that was gonna be. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be an easy problem, honestly. Yeah, I guess, you know, if it's, it, it was, if it was easy, someone else would have done it, no? Yeah. Uh, I think the amount of thinking and critical thinking that we've done, like putting behind what we're doing is, is pretty insane. Um, I think we have been solving for so many crazy things <clears throat> with the simplest approach. I, I still remember doing, I think this was a Series B that we were raising. Um, and, you know, there were these funds that would put the most technical people behind our due diligence. Um, and I, I remember they invited, I, I think it was like one of the AI professors at Stanford or something like that. And, and he was like expecting such a complexity on our technology to be kind of like fundamentally we, what, what was driving the results. And when we got there and explained it in a very simple way that we were doing simple things with complex, maybe complex data or, or but in a very simple way, he was like, holy shit. Me coming from a hardcore background AI machine learning kind of like world, your approach is way more efficient. It's maybe not as sophisticated as one would think, but the, the simple approach is what will be able to solve this. So in terms of, 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 of AI and the world of AI, like constructing data, because data, you know very well, like everybody talked at the, <laughs> I remember 2015, everybody was talking about big data, no? Mm -hmm. And how big data really drove like value, no? And we had a problem. We didn't have big data, eh, as, as everyone said, you know? Um, so what was our approach there? How, how AI really kind of like helped us you know, maybe in a simpler way, do things that were way more complex? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And, you know, coming to Notco, I, I had to go through this sort of circle as well. I came in with a super high end, uh, okay, we're gonna make everything autonomous inside the company, et cetera. Um, and I remember the first time I came to Chile, to Not Lab in, in Macul, Chile. Um, and, and I see like the whole lab setup, and, and it completely blew my mind because prior to that, you know, working in tech, I've always just worked in an office space or remotely or whatever. But you go in here, and there's uh, there's engineers, computer scientists, literally coding in a kitchen, and I see uh, Paula, our head chef, just there, you know, inputting stuff into a Dropbox, <laughs> and you know, they're all trying to connect data and stuff like that. And then I just walk in and everyone's like super busy. Yeah. Um, and I'm like trying to intro, hi, you know, me llamo, you know, my <laughs> Spanish is horrible. <laughs> uh, and I remember um, one of the chefs there was like, uh, oh, here, try this milk, right? And I was like, okay, I thought it was just cow's milk. So I drank it. I was like, yeah, it tastes like cow's milk. And I was like, where's the not co milk? And they're like, that was the not co milk. And I was like, what the? And then yeah. I, I was like completely blind mode, yeah. um, uh, mind blown. And I was like, how did you guys make this? And I, we had the engineers there, we had the, the chefs there, and they kind of explained it to me. Um, and it was, you're right, it was much simpler than I had uh, expected coming into it. And I think the part that I had completely missed when I first joined NACA, which we radically transformed uh, ever since, was who was making the decisions in making products mm. for CPG? Mm. It's culinary people, it's food scientists, it's product developers. And so the vision of the AI was, how do we enable the people who are actually doing the product development to make those better decisions? You know what I mean? Yeah. From an ingredient perspective, yeah. how do you try things that are novel? How do you encourage a whole sort of work stream of not just saying, hey, here are a bunch of AI generated concepts, but then how do we de-risk them through some sort of workflow? Um, and so I think that was the most interesting aspect where 
yeah, in the beginning, the AI was very simple, and you know we've we've elevated the AI dramatically since then, and, and I'm sure we'll get to it. Yeah. But I think that's important. Where you're developing an AI system, you want to show proof of value first. And I, I love for Notco, the proof of value was like, hey, we made a plant-based milk. It tastes like milk, and the secret ingredients came from an AI system. But it was a team effort. You know, we had scientists, formulators, chefs. Yeah. And a bunch of software and AI engineers just sitting in the kitchen, kind of figuring it out yeah. uh, on day one. Really product focused to show yeah. proof of value and yeah. go from there. No, uh, it was it was exactly like that. I think going back to where where the vision stand, because vision needs to change, you know, along the way. I think kind of like our vision there was like let's show the world in the next two to three years that the way in which we create products the pace in which we launch new products, the market share that we acquire, the partnerships that we create will really drive other companies to want to work with us. Mm -hmm. no? So we kind of like started off with this capitalization of our, of our technology or the underlying technology throughout the creation of products. And it's hard, right? Because you have fundamentally a technology company that is being capitalized as a CPG company, right? And CPG companies really have this metric that if you don't have scale, it's really hard to create a good business, no? So I think we never thought of that. You know, I think it was naturally occurring that we had not mayo, we had the, the milk, and it was like, we should freaking launch this and gain as much traction as we can and show the world what we are made out of. And we did. And, and, and it was 2017, March 2017, we launched Not Mayo in the market. And we got 8% of market share in only 10 months of sales. And, 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 the, and the question for me always was, is people really expecting a new Mayo? So, you know, I got to say, I'm Chilean. Um, Chile is the third biggest mayo consumer in the world per capita. Mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah, we, we eat absolutely everything with mayo. Um, and um, so mayo is a big thing. Like it's, it's, it's liquid gold, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in Chile. And, and so we launched something that didn't have any eggs, you know, but people really kind of like went to not mayo in a way that it was like, let me feel what the future of food looks like, you know? And they tried this mayo and it was like, holy shit. It's amazing, you no? Know? So we, it was a combination between what was behind the mayo and what was in front of the mayo, you no? Know? So the product made this whole vision a reality. Yes. So that is that, that, that kicked, kicked everything off. And, mm -hmm. and this is how we actually convinced the first investors, the founders of Mercado Libre, which is kind of like the Amazon of Latin America. Um, this convinced these guys that were not very savvy at biotech or AI in food or CPG. And they were like, these guys have something special. I don't know. Either they're fucking crazy or they really saw something that no one else has uh, or, or first than any, anyone else. And so we capitalized this technology throughout products. And it was not mayo and that milk and ice cream and burgers and chicken and Chile, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, the US, Canada. Uh, it was Burger King, you know, with, with an array of product that was amazing. Um, started with burgers, chicken, chicken nuggets, you know, so on. Uh, Starbucks. And how does that feel kind of from like a, a founder perspective? You know, you, you're doing this sort of proof of concept, proof of value with your first couple of products, <laughs> right? And your, your, whole, your whole mission statement is like, hey, there's problems in the food industry. We're going to use AI to solve it, and then we kind of unlock some ingredients and, and you know, product superiority in the first versions, and yeah. then these products just took off. Yeah. And where, where does your head go after that? Well, I was too busy constructing. I, I was not feeling, you know. For me, it was uh, the very beginning, at the very beginning of, of, of startups, I think the most important thing is to execute a good vision. It's really hard, especially if you have a romantic vision of changing the world through, you know, better foods. And, Everybody could actually have the same romantic speech. The, the, the hardest thing to do is to really uh, make sure that you're executing on the vision and making a reality in numbers. You know? that's, that's where everything gets really hard. Um, so as a CEO, I was embedded in making sure that the execution, the execution was perfect. You know? And it wasn't perfect. It was obviously not perfect. Uh, but it was... It was it was good enough to actually show the world that we were constructing something different. And they didn't know what it was. 
No. So from an outside perspective, and I think even it's the, it's the, it's the objective of this podcast, from the outside perspective, people didn't know what Notco was. For people, it was like, Notco, oh yeah, they're not mayo guys, they're not milk guys, they're not burger guys. Mm -hmm. But very few knew about Giuseppe and the technology. No? Mm -hmm. What is enabling Notco to be this kind of company that yeah. partners up, that you know, it generates geo expansion? Because also we needed to think about operations. Like we don't have a manufacturing facility anywhere. No? Yeah. We work like Uber in that sense, right? So it was like, how do we create this you know, machine of execution uh, without having to have the hurdles of being a big CBG or parallelly a fully only technology company? So it was hard. Uh, I was busy executing, and I think the vision, and thankfully, you know, we brought on board the people that we needed in order to generate the vision. And I think you're a big pillar of that. No, so also kind of like backing up the question to you, how did you kind of like saw this like CEO also like going straight up to execution, 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 when we kind of like left a little bit aside, sometimes the vision, no? Because mm -hmm. you need to allocate your resources and, 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 and accountability of certain things to different people in the company. Yeah. No? So I think I, or, or we naturally left a lot in the hands on the shoulders of people like you, no? How, how do you handle that? I, I, no, I think it was a it was a good problem to have, right? Um, you know, when you do these first success cases with you know finding these really novel, interesting plant based ingredients, and you first start thinking like, is this the whole value proposition of our AI and in our company? We're just the company that predicts you know peach and tomatoes in our chicken product, <laughs> yeah. and it is that a value proposition? But I think what the execution allowed us to unlock really was, hey, more than just finding interesting ingredients in plant-based in the product, there's all these other problems in CPG food, right? And I think it, we always tied it back to mission because you know, if, we were, if we wanted to make a, a better, a more sustainable planet, you really need to get the product to consumers at scale to make an impact. And, and it kind of opened up of, of realizing, hey, it's not just a formulation challenge. You know, the product development teams, now they have to scale up this product they can't source pineapples and cabbage from anywhere because it doesn't ex ex these ingredients are not at scale in, yeah. in, the, in the food industry. There's a supply chain issue. Yeah. How can we better understand what's in the supply chain that's still sustainable? And we made a whole you know, database ingestion of what the supply chain looks like. And then we see, oh, these guys are getting stuck at pilot plant because the solution is too viscous, right? And they're spending $20,000 per trial trying to do these things at pilot. Um, and it's just trial and error. Can we reduce that using AI? So, you know, as we launched products, we started seeing more and more pain points that were ubiquitous across CPG, across the supply chain. Um, and it was antithetical to, I think, our, our, our mission statement of you need to get these better products at the point of sales for consumers and to go from a vision and, and, and something in the kitchen to mass scale and adoption there's a huge value prop of using different AI tools, digitalization to, to actually get there. So, you know, from, from an AI perspective, it really opened our eyes to, oh, shit, there's a bunch of other problems out there that we didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> we would have never known <laughs> if we just stayed in the kitchen all day long. Yeah. Um, and those are worth solving because that is going to be the blockers to what we want to create and the impact we want to make. Yeah. So um, I think the execution uh, was seen as, as, a, as a positive in, in terms of shining a light on things that we needed to solve for. Yeah. And uh, sometimes people ask me, like, why are you still working in food for AI for yeah. five years? Like, there's a lot of problems to solve <laughs> yeah. in this industry. Yeah. No, that's, that's very interesting because I think what makes us unique at the same time is that we created technology along the way facing the real problems that we had in the execution of a CPG company. Exactly. You know? yeah. At the end of the day, it's easy I would say it's it's not easy, but it's easier to kind of like see one problem and and think that AI can help you solve for that specific problem without understanding that that problem itself is generated by many other yes. factors as well. You no? need to abstract out the yeah. problem, you know, yeah. and see it from like this thirty thousand foot perspective. Exactly. So so I think again. I think as a company where we were wise enough, maybe not strategically, maybe f accidentally. I think it was accidental. No, <laughs> that we were building. You're not that smart, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm not. Maybe I have a team that is smarter than me, but, yeah, just kidding. but, but no, but the thing is that it was, it's very interesting kind of like, again, like stopping today in 2024 and connecting the dots in the past that, that we were marking away in 
in the CPG world and with the AI, we were discovering problems that could make the CPG world way better, mm -hmm. way more efficient, way faster, uh, solve for costs, solve for processes, solve for formulations, solve for ingredients, solve for so many broken things along the way. So as you portray, I think the very beginning, at the very beginning, we thought everything was only about formulating something. No? It, it was how hard it was for a scientist and a food scientist to formulate a new product, even with domain of knowledge of the product that they were trying to make. Mm -hmm. no? And then we started to understand a little bit the complexity of creating a formulation from scratch. Um, then we, we, we saw that there was a very limited domain of knowledge of ingredients. Like, you know, the food industry was using eight, nine, ten different ingredients, no more than that. No? How do we expand that? And then you went all the way to the flavor houses and the fragrance houses, no? the ones that help you taste a strawberry milk when the milk doesn't have any strawberry in it. Mm -hmm. no? How, how that, that, that system work? And when you, when you double clicked on that, you saw that there were problems in that itself. So I think this path of like becoming a successful CPG company allowed us to create a very successful technology company as well, and vice versa. It's a very good, virtuous kind of like circle. Mm -hmm. And now we stand in 2024, and we look back and say, yeah, we built a very unique thing that took us eight years, nine years to construct that is a technology that is able to solve the entire world of CPG. And it's not only food, it's about you know, beauty, home care, personal care. It's about fragrances. It's, you know, do we uh, go and convince Louis Vuitton to utilize you know, AI uh, of Notco to create the best fragrance out there that you know, allows you to feel freedom uh, you know, the rainbow, you know, whatever, very subjective things that are very related to emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, it was eight years of that, no? It, you know, can you drive us through a little bit kind of like that, how the technology evolved and how, you know, we created technology and different modules to solve for different things? And then maybe touch upon how hard it was when AI wasn't a thing, no? Mm. The amount of friction that you got whenever you told the story two years ago versus what what's happening right now <laughs> yeah true yeah um where do we even start with this so i mean <laughs> <laughs> go back man go, go, go back go all the way to the start yeah. yeah i mean coming in we already uh, ruined the chapter you know yeah, like the, <laughs> this episode like it's an hour and a half I, we probably will have to cut it but anyway i think it's very interesting to go since the very beginning kind of like i think yeah i mean just take like looking at it from a macro perspective still um, you know, because my background is still, you know, was in fintech and ad tech. So you have to really figure out with AI systems in, in those industries where economic interest is going. And I think to a lot of companies that are mission based or statement based and want to make an impact, it's hard to have companies like this unless you're figuring out the economics to, to make it actually work. Yeah. And so when we're thinking about building AI, it wasn't just about, you know, how do we get, uh, you know, interesting ingredients in there, but how do we make this product? create value for the entire CPG supply chain. And so we actually started uh, really thinking about what, what do economics and what do pain points look like across suppliers. So when we started making, for example, the first versions of Giuseppe, yeah, heavily focused on novelty ingredients. Yeah. But the second system we ended up building, uh, Giuseppe Synthesis, was much more specific to solving business challenges, R&D challenges, and consumer challenges yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. So instead of just saying, hey, we want you know, a great product that consumers will love, it's, hey, we want a great product that consumers love, yeah, but we also need to have the AI consider uh, the margins of the product, so you're not losing you know, $2 on every sale and, you're, and you can't make an impact through time. Um, and we need to make sure that you know, it, we can scale up the product so we can get it to all these retailers across the US, across Latin America, et cetera. So we really kind of, brought in um, the perspective of what the food industry was was doing and then started building new AI from the ground up. And I think what we've been able to do really quickly at Notco, as you're trying to create new AI, you know, nothing like this has ever been seen before, is we were able to hire a really, really smart uh, AI team across uh, San Francisco and Latin America, working globally together, be able to just build stuff extremely fast. And uh, we have internal users, we have scientists here hey, try this out. <laughs> Does this AI solve your challenge? Yeah. And I remember the first time we had this synthesis platform that helps uh, scientists reduce trial and error, 
um, we, the first thing we tried it out on was baking a cake. And I, and I say this, I say this now because <laughs> Harley Davidson team is, is passing by, guys. Sorry for that. We don't have the the road blocked. <laughs> so we just wanted to see if we could make a cake that was maximum height and fat and like the biggest fattest cake you could, and if AI could learn how to bake that cake, right? Just doing a couple of iterations. Um, and I remember we built it, we built it, and um, the scientists and chefs created this monster cake in the lab, and we were all celebrating, like, oh my gosh, our AI worked. And then I remember that was like, okay, that's it. We were able to give this AI a bunch of different objectives of what the product needs to be, and I was able to hit it. The next thing, let's try it on not milk formulation. We went it to foam for a very specific problem, which was Starbucks cold. Starbucks. Um, can we get it to foam, right? And there's like these very specific problems you want to solve for in your product more than just novelty, that helps it get into where it needs to go to make mm -hmm. the impact. Um, and so with Giuseppe Synthesis specifically, we've been able to solve a lot of different things um, to actually you know, go from a product that's just a vision or an idea or a brief into reality, into stores in record time. So, um, and it's evolved since then. So you know, that for CPG, then we started building out a whole flavor and fragrance a generative AI system. Because we realized, like, hey, a huge component of food is the flavor. And to me, it was crazy that a huge part of your product is being kind of governed by a third-party company. That's to, crazy. To me, that was insane. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> and I was like, how do we build leverage back into CPG companies by putting AI into the flavor aspect? Which, yeah. if you know the supply chain, that's not how it works today. So we built technology in these sectors where we knew that if we were able to execute technology here, we would bring the solutions to the product but also maintaining sort of what the economic interest would be from the consumer at the point of sale, all the way back to our supply chain partners that we work with. This chapter became kind of like a little bit looking backwards, you know, and connecting the dots or, or, or on how we got to where we are. And I think there's value to that as well for people to know and everybody to know that we ended up here with, with a strong vision, but a naturally occurring kind of like life cycle um, where we capitalized on CPG where we found out that you know, formulation process or formulation AI or AI assisted formulation for food scientists was only the tip of the iceberg. And there were 90,000 things that we needed to solve for uh, behind that in order to generate a successful company in the point of sales. Um, we realized that the innovation process and system is absolutely broken in big companies. Even in our company was broken, right? Understanding that, you know, the, 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 we, we, I still remember where, you know, there was a, a very random, like even like coffee break that we kind of like chatted about creating this concept generator or concept quant to help the marketing team understand that there were not only trends out there, but how do we identify the, the, with, with way better chances of having a product more successful in the market before it was even done, uh, that companies are paying millions of dollars to, to marketing agencies with zero accountability to say and validate that a concept is great for the demographics that you're trying to target and to talk to, and then you launch it and you launch, and, and the, you know, the rates of failure are 95%, uh, zero accountability to the marketing agency that they said that this concept was going to work. Uh, so, so I think that kind of like talks a little bit about how, what Notco is now versus what it was in the, in, in the past and how AI has been created since, you know, uh, the get-go as a co-pilot of what we do as a successful CPG company. And that today, Notco is way more prepared to become the Intel insight of the, um, of the food industry in any way that you think. Um, versus what, what, what everything or what everyone or most of people thought in the past that Notco was like this plant-based company, right? Um, so the vision, I think, of, of Notco relies on, on what is AI going to help us do in the future and how do, we, how do we fix for not only the problems that our products as a CBG company have, but everyone in the industry uh, you know, faces, you know, and how Notco is a must to have in your innovation formulation processes internally, both in the marketing teams and the R&D teams of every CPG company in the world. Do you agree with, with that vision or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's true. I mean, that's why we started with pain points. We built an AI system. We tested it on our own CPG products with great success. Um, and I think we have a lot of attention. I love when people come to our office in San Francisco because they always come in 
one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast, they always come in. We thought your technology was bullshit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every time. Consistently. Consistently, right? Yeah. And then they see, you know, our, you know, behind us here, there's a bunch of like chefs and scientists <laughs> yeah. actually using the platform day to day in their workplace tool. And they say, oh my gosh, you have not just great products, you have an AI enabled workforce. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. think this post chat GPT era, every single enterprise is trying to figure out how to create an AI enabled workforce. Yeah. And even from us on the AI side, wh what does people plus AI look like in yeah. the future? I think we're on the forefront of, of doing this. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, when we talk to some of these two really large companies, the, the thing that's really interesting to me is where they are now. Remember yesterday we were just talking to one of the largest CPGs? Yeah. We have data, but we don't know what to do with it. Yeah. I was like, welcome to not go yeah. 2015. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and those, we're going to solve all those challenges. No, it, that's, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I really think that we have something that, that is quite exceptional. And, and, and the difference between how people come to the San Francisco office and versus what, how they feel when they leave it's insane. Mm -hmm. No, it's like taking a kid to the ride, like Six Flags, no? They're coming out way more enthusiast of the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have a metric for that. I think like 90% of investors that went personally to not go either in, in, in San Francisco or in, or in Chile to visit our labs and, and do the whole experience, look at the simulation of our technology, look at how technology was assisting all of our food scientists, chefs, and, 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 and everyone. I think 90% of them who went personally to the office, they ended up investing. It's, mm. it's, in, it's insane whether the, you know, if you do it for, with a camera, I think the, 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 the failure rate is like, 90%, you know, um, we convert only 10% in a camera and 95% in, in person, which is, again, a testimony of what we're building behind the scenes has the power to really change, a, you know, a whole industry. And, and it's a whole industry that is fundamental for humans today and in the future and for the world that we, we live in. So, um, I think we can close with that. It's a very, you know, a yeah. punchy punchline. Uh, You've been accidentally creating an AI first company for five years. It sounds like. <laughs> there we go. That's <laughs> a the lot conclusion. of lessons learned <laughs> and conclusions made. That is the conclusion. No, yeah. but a uh, brilliant journey. Incredibly, you know. Sometimes we never do this, right? We should do it way more often. Like stop and say, what did we did in the past? Really. Um, resulted in a company in the present that is amazing and what we hold in the future to be the potential of the company, it's, it's pretty freaking insane. And it will always be a result of how do we define or we decide to capitalize it, how big this company will be in the future. So uh, great, hopefully we gave some messages and, and, and things that people don't know about Notco. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Hopefully, you know, there's only, you know, not, not only our marketing team is looking at this and more people are looking like this. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to uh, send it to my mom, I think. Beautiful, beautiful moms uh, are, are an important cheer. Um, so, yeah, we'll come back in another episode. Fantastic. Great. Thanks. Thanks.